These are the persistent findings that, that have been compiled by multiple faculties using this technique in more than 100 classes. Invariably, we find that from the best and the worst, that my best is often your worst. In other words, what worked best for me may have been painfully redundant to you. There are many different opinions about what constitutes best and worst, and it's normal to find at least four distinct best pieces of the classroom, uh, of the curriculum, and at least two different worst moments. There's great variation. It goes from the broadest conceptual ideas or practical exercises all the way down to things that may seem trivial but which were irritating and got in the way of learning. We find persistently that what was best and worst for the faculty is rarely what was best and worst for the students. And in fact, it makes it difficult for the faculty to predict or even know what the best and worst is in the moment and places a premium on quality feedback from the students to keep the class on track. The faculty typically responds when they see these results wondering, were those students in the same class together because they can't understand how something could be great for someone and terrible for somebody else? They often ask, was I even in that class? Because what worked for them didn't work for somebody else and vice versa. They are almost always surprised by the results that they achieve. And they discovered that they cannot predict the students' answers based on their own educated read of what's going on in the classroom. It seems that expertise is both a lens through which we perceive the events in the classroom in a particular way unique to us, and also as a filter that prevents us from seeing things that are either working really well or working poorly for the students. From the takeaway and resources feedback, we also discover that my best takeaway may be your biggest surprise and that there's variation between the takeaways and the surprises. It's almost gotten to the point where we wonder, can we ask the question, was that a good class? Because there seem to be many individual moments of learning happening and that it's unfair to characterize this as some kind of composite learning experience. In fact, we need to pay more attention to the learning outcomes of individual students and the faculty in order to get a good handle on what actually occurred. We discover that telling the public uh, representation of your learning and your insights and your feedback creates knowledge in the classroom. We know the classroom discussion is good, but feedback about what worked and what failed to work also creates a form of knowledge in the telling. And so for this reason, we are learning that voice in the classroom is the classroom. It's the dialogue and the discussion that creates something new, exciting, and unique in the moment. We found that our grounded theory, the collection of insights that we generated from the bottom up, connected very strongly to Dr. Brookfield's academic work on adult education. That lent interest and dignity and authority to our findings and to participatory action research in general when we could demonstrate how effective and useful uh, PAR is. Uh, this connection to theory now has affected our design and delivery of lessons, the way we structure lesson resources, and the way we particularly prepare our faculty and philosophically prepare our faculty. We prepare them for individual lessons in a different way now, and we are engaged more in philosophical discussions about adult learning theory because of the deep insights that we've achieved. I want to talk briefly about four ways of knowing that are referenced in action research literature. Experiential, which is knowledge in the moment. Presentational knowledge, which comes from the telling. Propositional knowledge, the deep academic theory that informs what we do. And then practical knowledge, which is knowledge in action that achieves results. What we've learned from the project of asking five questions is that you can't see, hear, and know it all that every person in the classroom is a sensor, that you need to get their insights while it's hot, and that the classrooms really are learning laboratories if we're willing to add research to the action inside the classroom and develop deep insights therefrom. In presentational knowledge, we recognize that everyone has a story to tell, that telling is risky because it opens you up. Uh, your vulnerability uh, is, is certainly evident in the telling. But we also know that we learn through the telling and through the reflection on the telling. 
and that we learn in the moment, and so therefore we need to have the voices heard and encouraged to speak up and, and present their findings. In propositional knowledge, we saw that there can be, not necessarily is, but there can be a deep and mutually supporting connection between the inquiries of action research and the findings of academic research. In practical terms, as we approach the classroom every day, we've learned to be humble, to be curious, to ask somebody, and especially if you think you know something, you really better ask somebody to confirm or deny what your true knowledge is. We've learned that respecting people is important on its own merits, but also because it provides good educational opportunities. That dialogue is a two-way street, that it's not enough to survey and then act on that survey. You must respect the person who has offered you the insights and engage them in an adult human conversation. And we've learned that these kinds of research projects get results. They make meaningful, measurable differences in the way we conduct our education. Action research literature also is concerned with who is being affected by the outcomes of the action research. And we can think of that in terms of first, second, and third person action research results. I'm going to represent the first person action research as a story about how my teaching practice has been affected. And second person AR, how have the faculty, my peers, been affected by the discussions and inquiries that we've undertaken? And in third-person action research, how have the students and the college in general been affected? In my own teaching practice, I have become much more inquiry-based. I'm more collaborative with my peers and with my students and use that to guide my direction in the classroom discussions and in the selection and, and addressing of topics. I am much more active seeking feedback and then sharing the results of my research, and I'm willing to engage in storytelling risk much as I am at this moment. I'm looking to cross boundaries across classrooms, across calendar years, from one school to another, and from the school to the Army at large. I'm engaged and interested in multiple ways of knowing. The four ways of knowing become important contributors to our total knowledge. I try to model the behavior of the ideal student by being actively engaged in inquiry and being open and vulnerable in the classroom and allowing the, the lesson to teach itself where it needs to go based on all our collective insights. As a curriculum designer, I am much more interested now in creating conditions for flexibility for students and teachers to learn in their particular ways. In second person action research, I've seen our faculty, 70 professors, begin to increase the amount of reaching out to each other and to students. I see more faculty beginning to use the ask five questions technique. I see more crosstalk between departments. I see people engaged in partnered teaching and establishing relationships with critical friends who can observe them in the classroom and give them critical insight to help confirm or deny what they think is really going on. We're much more engaged in, dis in discussions of teaching philosophy formally and informally. Within third-person action research, I see the college and the students looking for and taking advantage of more opportunities for voice, for speaking out and speaking up in public and private, in written and oral presentations, both formally and informally. I see student and faculty connections increasing based on mutual research interests. I see the increased measured levels of satisfaction by both faculty and students as a consequence of applying voice and, and applying the five-question technique. I see improved understanding of complex material in written and oral presentations across multiple classrooms, and I see students and faculty engaging with this complex material outside of the boundaries of the classroom and then across time and space with units in the field and after graduation. In a nutshell, I'm very pleased with the, with the progress that we've made, and I'm actually very surprised at the revolutionary nature of the change that can accumulate through patient action research in small settings which are reported out and acted on by interested others. So thank you very much for your attention. I'd be certainly interested in following up with you if you'd like to know more. Uh, you can reach me at longke at yahoo.com, which is my permanent email address. So thank you very much for your attention and good day.